Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I am joined today by the awesome Will Ramos. He's, he's very, very good at dancing. It's um, me. Also, both of us have never, ever heard Gojira's albums. Will was just saying he's heard them live, loved them, but he's never heard the studio versions of the songs, and he's going to introduce me to Gojira for the first time ever right now. So let's get to it. They're amazing. Let's go. First of all, I just want to say, love the jaw harp. I was gonna, I was like, wait, is that love a it. weird tone quality from the guitar at first? And then I was like, no, 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 that's the jaw harp. That's the jaw harp. It sounds Dude. insane. Sounds swampy. It, I associate jaw harp with like Louisiana for some reason. Yes, exactly. That's exactly how I would see it. I love, I thought, I when I was a little kid, I actually wanted to learn how to play the jaw harp. Why haven't you yet? Because I heard it's really bad for your teeth. Oh, yeah. that's a good reason. Because it's literally vibrating in your teeth. Maybe it would kill cavities. Or your and other things, brain like your cells? actual teeth, like your, like your <laughs> actual teeth, and you just like have really bad teeth. Well, I don't know if it's true. Don't know. I have no idea. I'm I not gonna find out. Maybe there are healthier versions of jaw harps available today than the mythical version that destroys your teeth. I don't know. Maybe it really does destroy your teeth. It's I don't know. <laughs> but whatever, they got it. Gojira's got it going on, We're gonna and find it sounds out. really spooky. And I love that because you never hear that in any metal song. Ever. Right? I love it, when they start out with that. I can immediately sets an atmosphere. Exactly. Amazonia, baby. All right, back to the beginning. Hit it! Awesome things already. I we were talking earlier about how the drummer in here, Mario, is like renowned for having really cool fills. And I'm noticing it's it's got a simple structure right now, but there are little extra things already that are being peppered in. And I'm like, whoa, ooh, yeah, I'm really excited where that goes. But then the other thing I like is the way it like keeps sort of going back and then having rises up. It feels like it's really building a lot of anticipation. I love that. See, for me, I, I didn't even notice the drums. I mean, obviously, you know that they're there, but I, I didn't even pick up those little intricacies that are slowly getting added into it. People say Mario's the best. My drummer is one of those people. He said he's the best. Well, there you go. So we're going to find out exactly why. Let's go back to the beginning one more time. Let's do it. Some instrument going on, but hidden super far in the mix. Yeah, I totally hear it as well. I don't know what that is. It sounds, I think you're right, it sounds like some sort of whistle. Like, uh, what is the name of that that thing that sounds like a tube and, like tube and throat singing that's not tube and throat singing? Oh. It's an instrument. It's an actual oh, instrument. Like, I don't know, didgeridoo kind of. Didgeridoo! Is that a didgeridoo? Is that what I'm hearing? Or am I crazy? I don't, I don't think so. Let me. Because it's in there, it's so far. Some sort of like pan whistle, but like maybe I believe a that. one or something. I could see that happening for sure. I mean, it's it's supposed to be like Amazonian stuff, so yeah. Hey, yeah, uh, see cool. things you don't notice live, by the way, for uh, somebody I've obviously we just came back from tour with them, and yeah, I've never listened to this band like ever. I've been told by everybody that I've ever known under, you know, the stars, yo, you gotta listen to Gojira, dude. Gojira is the best since I was, like, first getting into music. But I'm one of those dorks where when I grew up, I listened to the same bands, same album, on repeat, 
a hundred times, maybe four albums between the age of like 14 and 20, which is pretty sad. So I really got a chance to listen to this band, like actual in studio. So hearing it live, it's like, it's such a good atmosphere to it, but you will never hear those little things like that. Because yeah. you would, there's just what this something about the, the live element, there's so much sound coming at you and it's so loud that your ears can't really pick up every little, you know. All the details. Yeah, the details yeah. and the little frequencies or things that you would never hear. Yeah. You can have so much more intricacy, I think, in a sound in a studio album because you are able to control all of the elements of how the sound is recorded and how it's mixed. So you can really pull one thing forward to let another thing come through a lot more. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's Gotta love the studio one. version. Let's go. Okay. I love that. say real quick and this is gonna sound if you know me you know I you I already know this straight straight up like some vocal technique things that I'm hearing remind me of in flames love Anders love him I don't know what this guy I don't know what Joe does I don't know what his technique is and maybe it's his own thing that he just figured out on his own it sounds like everything is almost like a pitch scream yeah there's a little All pitch in there pitch screaming to me he always does that. I don't know how he does it that way, though. Because if I did a pitch scream, it would not sound anything like that. It's fairly fairly deep at the same time with the tone of it, which is really interesting. Because it also is very sustained in the pitch, which I think is fascinating. Because what, what's happening, right, if, if you're having a pitch scream, is you've got your two vocal folds making your pitch. And then there's, if you're doing it in a way that is very reliable, replicatable for your entire life, then you're not making that harsh vocal sound with your two vocal folds, you're making it somewhere else. <laughs> and in his case, like, it's, I sounds like, it sounds more like an upper constriction to me, but it, it's hard, I wanna hear a lot more of it. Um, and I think it's fascinating because you have to continually have the right amount of air pressure for those vocal folds to vibrate at a consistent rate they're oscillating right a very repetitive rate without hurting yourself obviously yeah but then you also have to have enough air pressure for a secondary source in this case which is where the harsh vocal is coming from so i think it's i think that most of the time when we hear something that's really developed like this it's something that a person has figured out over time because i just don't think there's a ton of uh education that said do this and any Bro. sort of tried and true method necessarily other than experimenting not. You for yourself. <laughs> I mean, they've been they've been doing it since 1996, apparently, as we were reading before. Mm -hmm. So I imagine the vocal lessons for screaming back then were few and far between, if they yeah. even existed. A lot of the yeah. time, people back then, people were just kind of figuring it out. It's like, just how you're saying, like, this is sustainable. I can keep doing this. Yeah. So I will. And that's exactly. just how they chose their technique and their tone. Because a lot of this stuff, like, you don't hear these kinds of tones nowadays ever. I don't know why, but that's just mm. how it is. Yeah. It's it's really interesting because I, part of me thinks like, well, we should just keep doing that experimental method. Like, that's really good. People, if you're checking in and making sure you're not hurt along the way, that can be very useful. On the other hand, I kind of think about like, well, how many people tried that and just destroyed their voice? Oh, yeah. So, there's got to be so many. <laughs> right. There's got to there's gotta be some sort of balance. I hope that, I hope that someday we have some established model that we can follow. We're working on that. But. We're going to find you, gonna wherever you are out there. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you, and we're going to dissect you. <laughs> we're going to find out what's going on in there. I shouldn't be that excited about that, but I am. And we're going in your nose. <laughs> okay, let's go back a little Hit bit. Hit it. <laughs> So the whole part goes, dun dun, dun dun. You can literally like hear the change in pitch. There's definitely melody. Yes. I love that. And it's obvious. 
to but me then as that a very screamer. Last part, the last few lines, fools will crush. That was all spoken, wasn't it? Yeah, that doesn't, I don't have a melody coming through on those last No, not on pitches. the end. Yeah. yeah, you could tell like the lows are just low. It, it yeah. goes from that pitch scream thing. And then by the time the line is over, he's back into like a low growl kind of whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm doubting. Before I was thinking like it was an upper constriction, but now that I'm hearing it more and more, I feel like it's mid. It doesn't sound like fry at all. At all. I don't know what. that's. This is where I have been stumped. Yeah. Because I would watch him live every day and I'm like, usually for me, it's easier. I could pick out and figure out what a vocalist is doing from watching a live set, whether it's like on his phone or just like being there. And I could not for the life of me figure out what the heck this guy's doing. Hmm. Like, is he di I don't think that's a fry scream. But no. it doesn't sound like a false chord scream, I don't think. But maybe it's because it's layered so well with the pitch yeah. that he's just doing. Or maybe he just created his own technique out of the blue and was like, this is it. It's so, it's so fascinating because however the vocal tract is shaped above the sound source can affect what that sounds like so much. So when we talk about a uh, false chord scream from you, if above the false chords, like your pharyngeal space is much narrower, like you guys could be having the same fundamental creation, but just have the pharyngeal space be different and it would make a different sound. It's like, whoa, right? I need to talk to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what the hell are you doing? Joe, what you doing? Joe, what's going on? <laughs> Your throat is cool, What are you man. doing? I almost... I'm not even going to say. I'll wait till we get to the end. Okay, let's keep I'll going. I'll wait till we get to the end of this. That is nice. I have never heard that before. Another thing, you know, you don't pick up these these little frequencies and details that are going on when you're watching it live. It just sounds massive. But you can hear he's doing a little like, I don't even know what the heck it is. But it's like just a little, little background pitch. I don't know. Something. That's... He has such a deep tone overall as well, and it's just a beefy sound. But then you have this. I like, I like that we're having beefy with this essentially also more beefy harsh layering on top. Yes, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's, that's what my ear likes to hear. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. That that line, the melodic line there, was really pretty. Okay, sorry. See, you, I didn't even it. notice that it. again. You got it. You you had an idea. You needed to say it. <laughs> what was the idea? I don't <laughs> know. We got to go back. We got to go back. Bring it back again. Okay, so this is what I like. This is what I really like. This is all about songwriting and a lot of things that people in like nowadays, deathcore and, you know, all these other bands. Obviously, it's not deathcore, but they something that they will always just forget is that, you know, you want the music to also be able to speak for itself without you having to vocalize over it so that it speaks for itself. Mm. I just love how, in this part, you can hear it goes, -na 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 -na. it lets it breathe, and then it goes into the, it's, what is it? Uh, the greatest miracle, which is also, I imagine, a pitch scream, because he's doing that miracle. And then it goes back into that. Da, da, da. I love it when bands really 
let the music like speak and it's like it the vote you don't have to just throw a crap load of vocals when you're writing as vo all vocalists out there this is going out to you and i know you're i know who you are because i do it all the time you don't need to put so many vocals all the time sometimes you do a, what you need to hear and it was the word effective yeah. it will be effective because it fits the part perfectly the guitar is insane the vocals are great and they go hand in hand and this is this is not even like vocal technique. This is just like great song writing in general. And I'm a big fan of those little things. So letting it breathe? Letting it breathe. I because think... that's just, a lot of people don't do that. And you, you listen to it. You don't know how to head bangs. You're listening to one thing too much. This is mm -hmm. like a nice balance. I think Gojira nails it. I think there's a like a hook that is happening because you had a melody. You instantly could come back and sing from that part. You're like, oh, there's a hook right in there from the instrumental part. And it could be really effective. And you see this all the time in music across all genres when there's the instrument introducing a hook and that that hook is actually the thing the audience remembers afterwards, not necessarily the chorus, but the hook from an instrument. I love that. And that is, and it's such a nice hook too, because it's not insanely, you know, what people think about is you make really things really complicated. Brain loves it or your ears love it, but your brain doesn't know what to do with it. It's hard to remember it. Mm -hmm. This is one of those where the hook is so just huge, just sounds Massive. Da, 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 da. Like it's so simple, but it just hits. And that's just great songwriting. I love that. Good job, good job. Good job. Good job, guys. You do it. Go. Sorry, it came back again there. <laughs> I feel like you are Godzilla. Oh, I love that, let's go. <laughs> we were just talking about how this band originally was just called Godzilla. Like, that's so cool. And I think they um, had probably had for legal reasons to rebrand to Gojira in 2001. So, but I, uh, yeah, Godzilla. It I makes feel you like Godzilla. <laughs> I feel like I'm just stomping on things, just like. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that hook is really, really cool. It, it definitely um, feels like it's syncopated to me. It doesn't feel square, like it's not really fitting into your normal ideas of a, a tempo or time signature, I should say. And it, yeah, ba, 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 ba. Like even how many notes are in there, it keeps syncopating to the point where I start to lose track of, well, did that stay in the same time signature or did we add a couple of beats in there? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah. Are we in another time signature? Somebody in the comments is going to say yes. Maybe. Or maybe no. You guys have no idea what you're talking about. And you know what? Might be right. It's just when that when that hook comes in then. So it feels like it. it's keeping the same basic underlying beat. But because I'm hooked into that syncopation, I stop thinking about the time signature there. And I At least because the drums. The drums just uh -huh. keep it together. So you're just yeah. like listening to it as your brain thinks. It's like, this is 4-4. Four, four. Maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah, but the way the guitar just kicks in just doesn't sound like it's 4-4. Four, four. Let's figure it out. No, it's not 4. It's like done over 6 big beats, actually. All right, let's hear it. And then go. it has... So if I was going to... I'm going to go back a little further. I think they have a bar of, of six four, and that the ba 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 ba. ba uh, I think it's a syncopated rhythm on top, or like it's almost like a polyrhythm that's happening there. Is this math? <laughs> is this, it is math. Are we talking? Before we were talking about this, we were learning a little bit. She was like, "This is." It's a little math core in here, and I'm over here just like, I wonder if they wrote it specifically so that maybe one thing is not the right time signature, but it matches because of math. Right, 
Right. It might so be. you don't even think about it. It just flows. You're like, wow, nice. That makes sense. Meanwhile, you look at it on a piece of paper. You're like, this does not work. <laughs> but it works when you put it together with everything. I, I love math. This I, is math. I'm not sure if you guys love math. I, I really love math. Um, so We're learning math. Excited. You guys are learning math today. Congrats. Right. Good Free job. math lesson. Good job. Keep it going. That's, is that 6-4? That really cool. so it's I, 10 beats, and yeah. then it repeats. So I think it's a 6-4 and a 4-4 four, four together because you have that really cool um, syncopated rhythm in over six big beats, and then you essentially have a normal 4-4 four, four that happens in the middle. And it all lines right back up. Uh -huh. But ultimately, like time signatures, they're meant for writing things down on pages. So there's actually multiple ways you could describe this. This could be a 10-4. It could be a 6-4 and a 4-4. Four, four. Those add up to the same thing. <laughs> it's all the math. Oh my God, I just yelled that so loud. It's math. Not, it's, you were very excited. I got excited. <laughs> just like, okay, listen to my, my voice peaking in the microphone. I'm just like, oh my God, I yelled that so loud. <laughs> so excited. I'm taking you back to high school. Let's go. Okay, so you already know. Yeah. I don't even have to say it. Yeah, yeah. So how excited are you to wow. get some tube and throat singing in the middle of the song? This is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Because he's using some tube and throat singing, I would toss it up as a suggestion that more likely he's using false chords to layer into his sound because he's already using them for tube and throat singing. So this is what I was going to say earlier. I was ah. like, I'll wait till the end. Because as we were talking about it, I was my brain was like putting it together. Because it's uh -huh. like if he does tube and throat sing, uh, tech whatever frequencies he throws in the tube and throat singing, that usually layers like parallel to what I was saying before when we mm -hmm. do that. When I usually do my false chord screams. So I don't know. So then maybe his pitch screams are like false chord dominant. I mean, there's no yeah. I'm trying to imagine it like he does. Because most people, when they do pitch screams, they usually do fry screams. Mm -hmm. And they add a little pitch to it. And that's what Metalcore does. Architects, you ever listen to the band Architects? They just destroy it. Like, all they do is pitch screams, and it's all fry screams. Mm -hmm. This is something that, like, you never really hear. And I, maybe that's what's taking me so long to try and figure out what the heck is going yeah. on. Because you never hear that. And, you know, the I think... The tone's going over, but it's really low also, which like what you were saying before. Yeah. So maybe that's what it is. It's beefy. Is beef maybe the false? Yeah, it's beefy. I I think it might be. I'd be really curious uh, to see down a certain see what's happening. I actually, I really truly think that we don't have enough examples of being able to see down a person's throat at the same time as gathering recording data of what they're singing at the same moment. We don't have enough examples of that to fully say just from hearing somebody what anatomy they're using. We can't say it with a hundred percent surety unless you've seen down their throat regularly which we've done with Will. Um, however, like we, we basically define different things by the timbre that we hear or the color that we hear. So it's when we say like a fry scream, a lot of times this is just referring to a higher pitch area. Yes. And, um, and we know from some data that that often corresponds to a higher constriction. When you talk about higher constriction, though, you're like, oh, well, one piece of anatomy in that higher constriction, because there's like five different ones I can think of at the top of my head, where you can just go there, 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 there. Um, and, and some, we didn't even know, actually, I didn't know that lingual tonsils even played a role in higher pitched screams until I saw down his throat. I had 
no clue. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? Oh my gosh, he has these weird things. Nice. Um, so in his case, I would think because we do know that tube and throat singing is bringing in false vocal folds and true vocal folds at the same time, and this particular style of tube and throat singing, let me be very clear about it, there are different styles. Yes, um, Kagura, I think is this one. You would, you actually know about that a ton too. Yeah. So since we know that, then we know that he's already good at activating his false vocal folds, and that makes me think, oh, we probably have some involvement in that, in his sound. And that makes sense when it comes to like the the lower frequencies that you were saying that you that we're hearing. It sounds so deep. Mm -hmm. Probably goes yep. hand in hand. Yep. Okay. The more you know. Good job, Joe. <laughs> Good job, Joe. Good job, Joe. Killing it. I want to know what it feels like. He does it live though. Just saying. Also, pretty damn cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. That's, that's why cool. I was like, this is my favorite song. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite. Song. Okay, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Transition. Oh, they only know good transitions. But they it, don't know any bad. They can like, only do good. So progressive. It, it really it felt like they did it at a very careful gradation so that it didn't just lose me. Yes. Because you still hear all those really cool Amazon y sounds that they decided to throw in there, and then it just goes right into this. And yeah. you're not like, no. Oh. Like we just jumped ship. It was like, this is it's that drum fill, man. Mario! <gasps> <laughs> that. The heck, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's go back. <laughs> but the sounds are just so uh, ethereal almost like, or like i was like i was a little primal at the same time it feels like it's otherworldly yeah. wow. i like that i did do a great job uh, with this one i almost yeah. I, it gives me this uh i used to listen to fallujah a lot if you guys know Felicia? You, you, there's a band Hi. called fallujah oh okay and it's this, uh, I think it's like a death metal band. <laughs> no, they're great. They, uh, but it, does, it sounds, the instrumentation of it, it just sounds super ethereal. And I was getting a Fallujah kind of vibe. Oh. Not not vocally, obviously. They're two completely different bands. But and I, I think don't know. It's, probably, like, it's so interesting how Mario, um, at times you feel that things are really compact and then suddenly spread out. He, I feel like, plays with sense of time, which it's not just... Like keeping us on a beat, but almost playing with our heartbeats because our hearts want to, you know, beat in a certain time. Oh, yeah. And then uh, if there's suddenly a bunch of space, we're like, whoa, should I, did my entire sense of time just get distorted? I like that. Me too. He's playing with us. Yeah. You're playing with our hearts, Mario. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. an Amazon chieftain. That's what I've got from that that sound. I could see that. <laughs> was that what it sounded like live? I was just about to say, I don't know if I've ever heard that. The, I mean, the layers in there have a lot more production on them, so it almost feels like 
to achieve that, you'd almost need like a vocoder. It just, it, it's a different sort of sound. I mean, I know they can do, I mean, at the soundboard, they could do freaking anything. You know yeah. what I mean? They spend so much money on these boards where they can literally just go, boop, vocoder button. It's already now. It's put into the vocoder machine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have that. Maybe they do. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But I don't think, I mean, I also wasn't paying attention to that part. I didn't know it was there literally until just now. Maybe he does the whole thing, but he screams it live. Or maybe he does, he does sing it. Or maybe he pitch screams it. I never noticed that. <laughs> this is, the this more is you why know. it's good to hear both versions. This is why it's great to know the studio version. Is the is the jaw harp sound when he's playing it on the guitar? Whoa. Transitions. And the hook too. Right back into it. That's great. That's great. Ooh. But, ooh. I just noticed the jaw the guitar playing the jaw harps. Deo 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 deo. Whatever that that flicking sound is, uh -huh. you hear the jaw harp. Great That's transitions. See another. Another great thing, songwriting is really goes a long way. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Oh, man. And, and especially like hearing how beefy his sound, I'm going to just keep using that word. I think his sound Beef. is really beefy. Beefy. Both in, in both mechanisms of how he's creating his sound. It's beefy. A lot of times with a beefier sound, it's more likely to take a bit of damage because it, it it's like you're lifting a semi truck instead of a motorcycle. <laughs> Um, carrying up a beefy sound really high is when you get into the most trouble, actually. So, I, I've learned this <laughs> yeah, myself, right. trying to figure out how to do it. I'm still trying to figure out how to do it the mm -hmm. right way. It's, I mean, I, I think it's just a lifelong journey because there are all kinds of things that affect you. Once you've learned it a right way, then like, a couple of years later, you're like, oh no, that's not working this year. <laughs> well, but the fundamentals the are evolution, still the same. The evolution, yes. But how you apply those needs to shift over life, uh, depending on where you are. I mean, like women in particular, like having had a baby, whoa, that changes a bunch of things. <laughs> so that's fun. What are we learning from the guy, uh, the the vocal research guy? From Ingo? Ingo, Did yeah. Uh -huh. What are we learning from him that he was saying like a, a man's voice changes up until like, what is it, they're like 35 or something like that, something, or 45, oh. it's something like their voice is maximum matured at yeah. certain age. I don't remember what age that was, but he was a lot older than I was prepared to hear, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to remember the numbers off the top of my head, but that is around the right age. Um, I know that up until a certain point, um, also uh, male voices will drop and then they start to raise in pitch as they, once they get past a certain age because, uh, just because of vocal aging and sort of like brittleness that will naturally set in and then eventually grandma and grandpa end up sounding the same when they're 80, right? Yeah. Because yeah. grandma's voice has been going down and grandpa's voice has been going up. So remember this, guys. <laughs> You're not safe. <laughs> you, you, your voice is going to change too. It's going to change. Your, you know, there's a really great book actually called Singing Through Change, I think, that specifically talks about a lot of the hormonal things in particular that happen. So, yeah. Anyhow, it's a lifelong journey. Let the journey continue. <laughs> Just a little bit. Let's go back to right this spot, that pitch scream that you were talking about that you love. love One it. of the reasons, now I think part of us loving it so much is why it's echoed right afterwards. There's essentially like a delay that happens and you hear a little echo in the background. And it's because the producer knew that's a great moment. Let's hear it happen and again in the background. Check it out. You're in the Amazon. Did you hear it coming? Oh! <laughs>
I never even noticed the, the delay on that. That's <laughs> nice. I love the layers of it too. You can hear left, right, the left, right pan and the center pan. Oh yeah. It just sounds huge. It does sound huge. Is that even the chorus? Is that the chorus? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the chorus. I wasn't putting together the smoke on the set with the smoke in the scenes. Oh my god, it is burning to the ground. Yeah, yeah, ooh. It, wow. I really dig the way that um, the, how is it, the heaviness of their sound matches the heaviness of their message. Yes, right. really talking about the Amazon burning to the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very <laughs> heavy stuff. I don't think I would sing about it in, in country. <laughs> they have a song called, I think it's like, uh, I don't remember how they, uh, what the name of it is at the end, but it's literally like, it's called like the heaviest matter in the universe or some oh, shit wow. like that. And it just sounds so incredibly heavy. And you're like, this is, they know what they're doing here. Yeah. They're like, let's make the heaviest song. And they call it the heaviest something that could, ex I don't even know what it is, but it's wow. like, wow, they're killing it. They know yeah. what they're doing. This, uh, it, it, it works. The message. The message. Yeah. That's so important to have those two things tied together. Okay. I didn't even notice the smoke. Like I did, but I didn't realize what it was about. Yeah. Now it makes sense. The done. layers and the background are nuts, <laughs> right? There's that really high one in there that was kind of, that we talked about earlier. Yes, the pan flute. It almost it it almost sounds like the sound of dial up internet when I tried to pick up. The oh game. my! <laughs> I booted my brother off of the, the game he was playing online because I was annoyed. Oh my so, god! Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so many layered sounds. Now we go to the organic instruments. That literally sounds like bones, just freaking. Whoa, whoa, okay, I wanna hear that play out again because wow, crap, that was yeah. so many different instruments that came in with that. You can tell, like, as it's starting to fade out, it turns into like only, I guess, what native people music or instruments yeah. they would have. Like that's what they slowly transition to transition yeah. into. And it's like essentially it's saying like maybe I feel like the metal heaviness of it is the emotions. And at this point they can express it with these instruments so far, but if you were to add heavier instruments, that would maybe even more fully express the anger. And oh yeah. That was cool. They did a great, this is a great music video too. I don't even know how they got half of the shots that they did unless they actually went to the Amazon. Right. It's a very it's expensive intense. music video. You feel like a little metal? Yeah. Wow. Whoa. That was a fantastic outro. I love how we were talking earlier about how something like this in a studio is so different from live. It's like you can almost hear what their dream version of it would be when you hear a studio version or even see a studio version with an, a music video like this that helps it further the message. Oh, yeah. But then live is also just an entirely different experience. It, I mean, there's something about it. Like you might list, you might like miss those little details in a live setting, but it you know, all the other things that you're getting, like all the other information, whether it being like insanely loud because something about like humans, when we hear things louder, we think it's better. 
I don't know what it is. It's some kind of science. We just hear it super loud. We're like, whoa, it just got yeah. so much better. I don't know what's going on. Something's wrong with us. <laughs> you can't replicate that sitting here. I mean, maybe you can if you blast it a lot. But if you just go the thing about nothing beats seeing a band live. It's huge. It's good energy. They're well, huge. Uh, this was super, super incredible. Thank you so much for introducing me to Gojira. For oh, first so time. good. And if you guys want to see some more music on my channel that Will totally loves and had some way influenced me, then uh, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music. Every day. Wow, we just talk. God, we just talker. freaking. What are we talking about? Voice. Things we're passionate about. True. Music. Very much. It's very easy to talk about things when you're really passionate. That's why about them. thirty minutes goes by. It feels like it's been twenty minutes, <laughs> fifteen minutes. This one. <laughs> ah! All right.